Okay, so I made a new sheath for my axe. Um, I did it because I actually I made it thinner behind the edge. I actually widened the bevel um, about to, well, like almost twice as, as wide as it was before. But so for this video, I'm going to show you how to make this. Um, this extra piece here that um, you can loop your, your belt through it. Uh, my previous sheath had had this piece of leather. But the problem is with leather is it starts uh, stretching and it feels like it kind of sags after a while. So it doesn't really like, it doesn't feel like one whole piece as it does like this. So let me just show you one more time what this is. So I just bolted it on here. Okay. Um, actually, let me show you. Before I go to the, it's actually making the that piece. So yeah, made this thinner. Okay. All right, so I'll get started. Okay, so the next thing is you have to choose where do you want your belt to go. Um, the best thing to do is choose like a nice flat area. Like the longer the better. This is about four and a half inches and I found that it's like fine for me. You don't wanna to go too long so that it doesn't actually go past your belt loops. Um, just make sure how much, you know, whatever pants you're gonna wear when you're wearing uh, whatever sheath you wanna put this on, that it doesn't go past the belt loops, um, that it's not too long. So I'm gonna choose this area right here, just because it's super flat and it's the longest area. The only thing I have to watch out for is that I, that I have enough space, show you here, from where I do do, do the cutouts from here to here, so that, that I have enough space here so that it's like, it does have it does have enough reinforcement so it doesn't um like in the future or something from just hanging on your belt like snap off or something so i think this is about like like about half an inch this is this is fine and i think i have just about the same amount of clearance if i go here half an inch too you can use your belt to visualize it something something like that should be fine and the other thing I have to look at is this here bump. The cutout, I have to make the cutout probably around here. I don't want it too close to here so that I can actually put this in there. Um, so just a little bit far further away. So from here to here, here seems fine to me. All right. All right, so now um, I'm going to cut out the piece of Kydex I need. I'm going to choose... So these two eyelets and the eyelets look like doo-doo so <laughs> the the tool i was using just kept on like biting them for some reason but whatever um these these eyelets i have to use for sure um i can add these uh, for just reinforcement which i will but these i have to use so i could i could go like this whole piece like this whole sheath um the whole side of the sheath and just you know bolt on everything but I don't think I need to so the this little plate that's gonna have the loop is actually gonna be cut off right here so this piece in the back is what I'm gonna choose for it and you want to oversize it just because um, it's better to, to have a little bit more than than a little bit less just from experience so now I'm just gonna mark this out and cut it out then and to cut it's the same thing you just score it with um, with a razor um, if like let's say let's say I do a square here. You can't just score both sides and just snap it off. Uh, you have to just use the saw for whatever side's shorter, and then just score the other side and snap it off. I usually just use like a hacksaw um, to to cut whatever I need to on this. But I'm just gonna score it, and I'll show you how it snaps off. I mean, there's like tons of videos that show this, but whatever. Okay. Just to show you, I'm going to go over it a few more times, but I'll, I'll, just so it's not like crazy long, I'll show you when I actually snap it off. Okay, so I scored it and then just, just bend it. And it just does that. And then it should snap, so I don't get the camera. Okay, it's fine. Alright, so next, I'm going to heat this up. Alright, so I'm going to show you my setup. So this is just a electric skillet. And this is like this press I made 
inspired by a tortilla press, I guess. <laughs> um, just with foam and, and yeah, two pieces of wood and a hinge. And then um, something I actually bought recently is this 600-pound this DeWalt clamp, which actually makes better imprints than what I used to use, which was, I don't even know what these are rated at. I used to use two of these, but, is it even saying that? But that one clamp, uh, that 600-pound clamp is actually makes better imprints than those two combined, so, yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Um... I'll start here, but I have to, once I heat this up, I have to put this on here. There isn't much to it. The only thing I have to make sure is that I'm going to try to get enough, an equal amount of, of space out of the both edges. And I have to cover everything that has these holes. So, and I, I'm going to try to get enough space off the hole too. So, so just so I have like material to work with. So I'll show you that. Okay, I'm gonna get started. And um, there might be some dust on me still because I just got done making the sheath. So, yeah. All right. So I put this um, at 250 degrees. And I'm just gonna flip this thing while it gets hot. You're gonna look at, you're gonna see it. Let me see if you can't see it. Yeah. So it's just gonna concave. It's gonna keep doing that, but when it does concave, the you start getting only one part that expo that's exposed to the heat, so you have to flip it over. Just think, think tortilla, basically, that helps. And you have, to, you have to get it basically to work. It's like, a lot of people say, like lasagna, and that's a, that's a good analogy. Is it an analogy? It's a good example. Once it gets to about that consistency, I'll put this on here. You just have to remember shiny side down to go up against this. And just remember that, to have all the spacing right when I put it on there. Now, you can actually do, you can see it actually shrink a bit. And then when it does get, when you do like burn it, um, it gets shiny. You can actually tell when it's burnt too, so you don't want to get it. To, you don't want to get it to that point. Now, after after it does get like soft, I have to basically work a little bit fast to get it on here. Maybe. I'm gonna say yes. I don't need this. Um. Okay. Uh, right about there. All right, that was a weird sound, so I, okay, whatever, I'm just leaving it like that. Something didn't happen, I'll show you to you later. Okay, so now I just gotta wait for, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait 30 minutes and take a look at it, but you have to wait until it's no longer hot at all. Um, if you take it on, it's warm, a lot of people said this and it's true, it'll actually deform a bit, other uh, kydex will. So you have to take it on when it's like, like basically nice and room temperature. Okay. All right, so this is how it came out. And there's a point where it locks in because it, it took the shape of uh, the sheath. Okay, so next up I have to make the marks on where I want the cuts to go and do the cuts, so I'll show you that. Oh wait, actually, I'll show you this other piece too. All right, so I have these two pieces of Kydex that are, when put together, Roughly the same thickness, a little, well, actually a little bit thicker than my my belt, but it's at roughly the same thickness as the tip, and also the same width. 
So if they're a little bit, this piece is a little bit wider than the belt itself, but the, you have to go by whatever is the widest part of your belt, which for me, it's the tip of this thing. All right, so next up, I'm, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna glue these together. And that's something I didn't do for my ax, which ha caused them to shift a little, which I didn't like. So I'm gonna glue these together. And then meanwhile, while it dries, I'll show you how I cut these out. And it's kind of janky, so. All right, so I'm gonna start by marking where I want it. It's gonna go here. And I gotta remember to leave a certain amount of space up here, so it's gonna be like this. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. So now, this is where the cuts are gonna be. So, first cut. And then the next cut is going to be here, let's say right there. All right. That seems fine to me. Okay. All right, so now that it's marked, um, to cut the slots would be super easy if I had a Dremel, but I don't. So I'm going to use this angle grinder. All right, so let's see how that goes. I'll do this one over here. Okay, so that should get me like just enough through so I can actually put a, like a, a saw in there and just cut the rest, which I will. And I'll do this one off camera. Well, whatever, I'll just do it right now. Okay, cool. All right, so now I should just be able to poke this through. Let's try that. See that? So I'm gonna saw that, and then I do have a little file if it's too thin, but I think it should be fine. So I'm gonna saw up and down here, and then after that, I'll show you how I uh, get this to, to form to, to the belt, basically. All right, so this is how the cutouts look. And so next, I'll show you how I'll make the imprint for the belt. All right, so for this next part, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, because it's gonna like be a few things at once. So first, I'm gonna try to isolate just this little spot here by just putting a rag around this area and then just hitting it with uh, the heat gun. Just trying to hit just this space. Once I feel this is getting like floppy here without the rest getting floppy, I don't wanna lose this, um, this contour. I am going to get this, which is the analog for my, uh, my belt. And I'm gonna put it through here and I gotta make sure which you should do it this way. I gotta make sure that this end is here. I do want it to be a little bit out. When that's gonna do, it's gonna make a curvature on this end. And this end is gonna make a curvature too, just from experience, what tends to happen. Um, this hard area, when it meets up with this flimsy area, and I put it in those pads and you know press it down, this will flip up. So I should get a nice curvature here on both ends. I just gotta make sure that this is around here. All right, so once I do that, I put this in, leave it there. I'm gonna take this and then put it on top of this here. I gotta make sure it's right where it should be and then close it and then clamp it and then wait again. All right, so. I'm gonna set it up and I'll show you. Okay, so this is how it looks, so it looks kinda weird. So I just basically got a bunch of rags, twisted them, and I'm just gonna outline the part that I wanna want to get soft. So after that, I'm gonna just here. I'm gonna fold this, try to get it to, to go under.
Okay, so. So this is gonna be blowing wind, I mean air. <laughs> and um, this reason I'm putting the clamps so it stays there. So I'm gonna pull on these a little bit. So for the top spot, try to tuck this in as much as I can. So, I mean, the more I put, the more stuff I put, you just have to keep in mind, the more it's going to be harder to, like, get rid of all this and then, like, needle this through, but whatever. We'll see. Okay. So, I'm going to get started. I'm just going to cut it right now, and I'll show you right what I'm doing. All right. So, let's try it. Okay. You'll see the difference. Um, you'll, you'll see it kind of balloon. Like lose some of its, um, its shape. And then you'll know it's like, it's basically getting soft. Which makes sense, but you'll see. Um, can't really see too much there, but. You might as well touch it, I guess. Okay. Damn, that's hot. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Just a little bit more. Okay, that's about it, I think. No. <laughs> All right. Maybe I took too long. We'll see. So this is how it came out. I already took out the, the piece of plastic I had in there. It doesn't look too pretty, but it's fine. I think this came out okay. So it's not really okay. Um, there's a bit of a bulge on the Kydex. I'll put a little circle around it so you can see it. Um, I'm still going to go through these steps, and in the end, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll show you how to fix it. So, yeah. Still locks in, in place. So now what I'm going to do next is I got to do all the holes. I got to drill out the holes and then shape it to, to the rest of the sheath, basically. All right, so we'll do that. All right, so first I'm going to use a, a smaller drill than, uh, than a quarter inch, which is the hole that you have to do for these, these rivets, eyelets. Um, so this is, I think, a 7 32nd. Um, 
drill? It doesn't say on here, which is weird because all the rest say something on him. Uh, so I'm going to drill first into one of these. Um, so it's going it's to go into, you know, the, the piece in the back. Then I'm going to screw that with a Chicago screw. And then I'm going to continue doing holes like that. So it's, it keeps it in place. The, the screw will keep it in place. And then until I'm done doing all the holes, like little by little, it will just be secure. So first hole, go with to make sure it's where I want it to be. I'll go with this one, wait. Wow, okay, well maybe one of these over here. Okay, I'll go with this one here. Okay, that's where it should be. So then now I'm just going to put the, I'm going to make the actual hole into a quarter inch hole. And then I'm going to use the Chicago screw on it. Oh, actually, let me see what up. Never mind. I'm just going to do it like that. I don't have to make it into a quarter inch hole. So then I'll just put that and then I'll continue. So I'll put that first and I'll show you. All right. So next up is going to be this guy here. And you might be asking, like, why am I not putting, um, you know, eyelets on this too? The thing is, if you put eyelets on this piece, then it's going to be lifted just because of the thickness of the eyelet. It's going to be lifted up, um, you know, away from from your sheath. So you want it as close as possible. So next up, like I said, this fella here. Actually, let me see first. Yeah, that's fine. So then I'll put a screw in there. And then I think you kind of get the idea. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you afterwards how it looks. All right, so I actually messed up this part, so I'm going to do it again. Um, there's some people um, loading some truck back there, so you're going to hear some noise. So um, I'm going to try tape. What happened last time was uh, the other sides, the sides of this thing still got heated. So it ended ended up deforming like this little area where the the holes are, which like lifted it up. Um, so it's like it wasn't like completely flush with uh, the the sheet. So I'm gonna try this again. This time I'm gonna put a little bit of tape. Let's see if that helps. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the rags. I'm gonna put them around, and then I'm gonna try to heat just this section. But what I'm gonna do is with the rags, I'm gonna put them a little bit closer, so it, it only shows. Um, probably like about half an inch of this, this section here and not the whole thing. So we'll try that. Okay. All right. Let's see if it works this time. Oh. 
get it to come up through here. Sorry to take me too long. Nope. No. All right, whatever, no. It wasn't soft enough. I'm gonna keep this in here and try it like that. All right, try number three. No, the rest got floppy too. All right, whatever. Okay, so it seems the problem is, I don't know why it's like so much harder than this other guy. I did this in the first try, so I don't know. But it seems like it just, it's a smaller piece, so I guess the heat is like going further more. I don't know, or maybe it's, I gotta put something underneath so that the, the air isn't like just basically getting accumulated underneath the plastic and then just basically heating up the whole piece. So we'll see. I might have to redo the piece again. All right, so it came out okay. So now what I'm doing do now is just cut off everything, all the excess, and basically just um, line it up with the rest of the, the sheet. All right, all right. So to get it as close as I want to, I mean as clo close as I, as I can, I just use these uh, sheet metal snips and just um, you know cut off what I can basically. And these work fine. You just the only thing is you get to a certain point where you can't um, use them anymore because it gets too um, too uh, like caught up in the plastic itself. And also, it because it the way it cuts it, it shears it. You do get a lot of white like close to the edge, so you can't really go right up against where you want to. Um, you have to use this thing to finish it off oh, this guy so for this I'm just gonna do this to it and just wear it down to get it to where I want it basically so I'm gonna do that and I'll show it to you afterwards okay so now I basically shaved everything down using that um, a little belt sander and this little part moved a little bit, but I don't really care. See how this isn't really flush? Everything else is. Just that part. I think what happened was, and then this, I guess this would be flush if I had a screw there, but I don't. So up here too, it's not, not as flush as it should be, but that's just because there's nothing um, fastening it together. I think the reason this moved was because of this. That little piece I put right here, the Kydex. Touch this and see how I made that, but that's still fine. Um, it fits well. I mean, it still fits well, so. Now, the next thing and the last thing I have to do now is basically just um, smooth out all the corners and stuff. So, what I like to do is I like to go over the, over the corners with the razor. 
basically just go just take off some of the corners just like that and I already did it but I'm just showing you and once I do that I'm gonna go over thing with uh, 220 grit first and I'm gonna make like a big jump from 220 to 800 in the end and you can do that with something with a material that's this soft it's plastic basically so so yeah I'll show you one last time how it looks and then I'll show you I guess how it looks on me too I'll, I'll put this on and show you um, how it turned out all right so I finished it Let's see and once again if this was if I had a couple more fasteners maybe this would be completely up against the plastic too but the only part where it is pretty far is here. For some reason this, I mean, well, I have an idea. But yeah, so this is how it looks. I ended up um, doing this, at, taking off the corner on this side. I, I didn't take the corners off on, and here's a bit of a separation actually. I didn't, I didn't take the corners off of, um, I just wedged them together and then took only the, these corners off. Cause I mean, I want them to be as close as possible. So that's that's one thing to do just um, put it all together and then when you do um, sand it sand it together and then sand the parts that are not together um, when you have the pieces apart so yeah but everything else just do just do everything at once um, one thing that came to mind too so all right uh, here's how it looks actually put this in here There it is. A little bit of movement. Just because the tip just because the tip is, is wider than the rest. But tip wise, see it doesn't move that much. Um one thing, yeah, you could I mean that this was the first idea I had was just basically putting it in here and then trying to like get the tip here or and then just like smushing it. The problem is um, you know, pressing pressing the kydex down on the actual belt. The problem is that this belt is made out of like webbing, and it just um, compresses with, with, uh, you know, with with the kydex along with the kydex, and then it is just it's not a it's not a good fit. So, um, so you have to think about those kind of things. What you do use to to make your molds for stuff, you have to use something that's a little bit more rigid. Um, if whatever you're using is like, let's say, well, actually. Like let's say I didn't have the tip on this, it's just something to think about. And if I use this as a mold, when I when I use it use use it as a mold for the kydex, it's gonna get compressed. It's gonna get compressed, and then when I do try to put it in, it's just gonna be like a hard fit. So just get something that's like the same size, but rigid. All right, so this is how it looks. And uh, it is a lot more. It's a lot more stiffer to take out the axe. Than it was in the beginning i think it's just because the bolts uh they have a broader head and they're putting more pressure on the on the edges of the the kydex itself but yeah it goes in fine Let's see and then um it's a it's an up pull so so it's not going to move from where it's at i can still shift it back and forth fine um without nothing happening to it so yeah without so it's not like a knife that when i do pull on it Everything's gonna shift over. Yeah, I just go like just up. Well, let me show you with that holding actually. I just go up and that's it. Okay. And it's fine, it stays in the same spot. Uh, and just for the hell of it, I'll show you the other axe too. Just so you can see how it looks like a pancake. It looks kind of nuts. All right. All right, so this is how the cleaver axe looks. It's pretty huge, kind of crazy looking. Even if I put my shirt over, it's still kind of nuts. So, but it does come out smoother than the other one. Uh, and it's just because I've had it longer, I've used it more. In my experience, Kydex tend to soften up a bit, which is with time. And I think the same thing will happen to this one too. Well, it will. Cause this one was a little bit stiff when I first finished making it. And so, yeah, but just so you can see the difference. Yeah, kind of crazy. Same, same length, same width yeah so this is actually hopefully this little tutorial wasn't like too scatterbrained 
But um, this is actually like the only the second time making one of these. Uh, if I do figure out something like better or a better way of making it, I'll just I'll do an update. But if you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. Or any suggestions, actually. If you have like a better way of doing something like this, I would love to know. So, all right. Um, yeah. Bye.